The Sacramento Kings are perfect at the California Classic, capping off a 3-0 event with a win over the Los Angeles Lakers. That's always sweet to say. And speaking of sweet, Keegan Murray continues to shine. We'll talk about his California Classic, the play of Keon Ellis, Namias Kata, Matt Coleman, and more. Plus, I have comments on Dante DiVincenzo signing with the Golden State Warriors. It's all right here on Locked on Kings. You are Locked on Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. Time for another episode of Locked On King. Hello and welcome to Locked On Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all regular season and all off season. Locked On Kings is partnering with Arcade One Up to give away three free NBA Jam Shack machines. That's right, three of them. These are the guys that are known for making incredible retro three-quarter scale at home arcade games like Pac-Man, Golden Tee, and many more. You can enter to win on ArcadeOneUp.com slash Locked On. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later on in the show. My name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. I'm a Sacramento sports producer uh, and host at ABC 10 in Sacramento, and I'm excited to be able to talk about Kings wins, especially over the Los Angeles Lakers. It's always fun. Sure, it's summer league. Doesn't really mean anything, especially in the California Classic when there's no champion, at least in summer league, there's a summer league champion, right? Which, by the way, the Sacramento Kings are the defending summer league champions and the only two-time summer league champions in history. But I digress. The Kings are also California Classic champions. I'm saying it. I'm declaring it here on Locked on Kings to go 3-0 and during the, Cal- uh, during the Classic. And honestly, the perfect finale we could possibly have. The 2-0 and Sacramento Kings taking on the 2-0 and Los Angeles Lakers. And no disrespect to the Warriors and the Heat. Those teams were terrible, so it made sense that the Kings and Lakers should play each other on the final day. At least they got that right. What they didn't get right, what wasn't perfect about this California Classic finale is the fact that it was played in an empty arena, an empty chase center. Come on, people. An empty arena. Now, it was considered, I guess, a scrimmage game. That's why, or that, that was the term used for why they didn't allow fans for the final day. I don't know if they considered today's game a scrimmage and not the other two. What did they consider the other two? I have no idea. Look, this is salt, and I highly recognize it as salt, and and I I preface it as salt before I spread the salt. The California Classic should be in Sacramento. It should not be inside Chase Center. They had the NBA Finals. They enjoyed the NBA Finals. It was great for them to have the NBA Finals. Chase Center is a beautiful building. San Francisco sucks. I hate that city. I have no problem saying that. I remember Charles Barkley saying uh, before the NBA Finals how much he was not looking forward to going back to San Francisco because how much it sucked. San Francisco sucks. Can't stand the city right now. Just can't stand it. Don't like the drive. Don't like the busyness, the people. Uh, It's just, sorry. If you're from San Francisco, I don't mean to offend you. I guess I kind of do. I don't like San Francisco. I just don't enjoy going. The Chase Center is beautiful. Thrive City around the Chase Center is beautiful. I understand the appeal of the Bay. I I grew up a uh, diehard Oakland Raiders and Oakland A's fan. So I understand the appeal of the Bay. I don't like San Francisco. And I really didn't like the California Classic being in San Francisco, especially when you consider every single year of the California Classic's existence before this year being in Sacramento with big crowds. Now, I'm not trying to lie to you and I'm not going to try and, and 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 make it out to be something that it's not. Look, there were empty seats inside the Golden One Center, of course, for the California Classic when it was here. It's summer league basketball. But the California Classic was way more, way more successful here in Sacramento, not just with ticket sales, but you've seen pictures of the crowds outside in uh, Doco to celebrate or to watch. Uh, I think they had little John perform one year. Like the California Classic event, Sacramento does it right. Sacramento goes hard. In San Francisco, where maybe they're a little more used to actual winning basketball there and they don't care about the Summer League, and I understand why, it was crickets. It was crickets. The best day was the first day. That was the only day that I went, but I had friends there and people there that were there the entire weekend. First day was okay. It was all right. When the Kings played the Warriors, it was fine. At least Steph Curry was there to get that building, give that building a little bit of energy other than Keegan Murray putting on a show. Day two, crickets. And then to have the final day be without fans? What the hell's the point of having the California Classic if you don't have fans for one of the days? What's the point? There is no point. The California Classic is just as much about the fans as it is about the players that are playing. So, I mean, I'm okay 
was sharing it with the other California teams, it sure as hell isn't going to go to Miami, obviously. But I guess I'd be okay with it going to the crypto, whatever the hell it's called, arena, a.k.a. the Staples Center in Los Angeles. I, I guess I'm okay with that. I think L.A. would do a better job supporting that event than San Francisco did. But in reality, we all know that California Classic is the sac- is, is Sacramento's event. And nobody's done the Bel- California Classic. No one will do the California Classic better than Sacramento. All right, I'm off my soapbox. Let's actually talk about what happened in the California Classic, which, of course, is the Sacramento Kings going 3-0. and oh. And what I like the most about this spread of California Classic games is you saw some consistencies, but also you saw Sacramento win for different reasons and because of different players. Game one, it was all Keegan Murray. Game two, it was a mix of like a, a, a Keon Ellis, Namias Cato. It was more of a, a team win as a whole. Game three, Keegan Murray had another really, really solid performance. Matt Coleman played really well. Keon, El- Keon Ellis played really well. Namias Cato got his first double double. Like there was a lot to like about the spread of games for the Sacramento Kings. Now, there are also a lot of things to pay attention to and be critical of. I thought the Kings point guard play was really bad. No disrespect to Freddie Ferrari, but the poor man, despite having a phenomenal name, he hit the front rim on every single shot. He doesn't have a three-point jumper, and his lobs to Nemias Keita all, all, every day were bad. <laughs> they just weren't good. Now, he did, I think, lead the Summer League in assists. Good for him on that. And I like how he pushes the tempo, living up to his name. The Kings were clearly trying to play in transition. But with the exception of that, them looking sloppy, turning the ball over a lot, playing in the half court, remember we have to remind ourselves that this is a team that has barely spent any time together. They got together for a couple of games, a mini, mini, mini training camp before Summer League started, had a couple practices then played three games of the California Classic. For them to go 3-0, and they all deserve a round of applause. They all deserve credit, as does Kings associate head coach and summer league head coach Jody Fernandez. Happy for him, happy that the Kings went 3-0, and and of course, capping it off with a win over the Lakers is always sweet. Keegan Murray, though, man. Keegan Murray, he started the first two games hitting the first buckets of the game. He hit a, a corner three in game one, hit a nice uh, mid-range jumper in game two. Starts off game three, it wasn't the first bucket of the game, But his first bucket, he gets a steal in transition, easy layup. Like Keegan Murray, in in so many ways, showed us the full package that he is. And it's easy to see how he was able to be effective in the flow of the offense and imagine what that is going to be like playing with De'Aaron Fox, with DeMontis Sabonis, with Harrison Barnes, Malik Monk, or Kevin Herter, right? I think Keegan Murray, now we're going to see more in Summer League, and I'm I'm trying not to overreact too much because it is just California Classic. I get it. I think Keegan Murray, and I've I've been consistent with this before the Kings even drafted the man, I think Keegan Murray is a night one starter for Sacramento. I think he's proving why he can be a night one starter for Sacramento. It's not the fact that he's going to be scoring 26 or 24 or 19 points per game or whatever. It's the fact that he does a lot of things really, really well. He's a smart basketball player, and he fits with the flow of an offense. That's where he got his points. 26 points in game one, 24 points in game three. Struggled with just nine points in game two, but took a lot of shots, missed a lot of shots, but he was shooting with confidence. And he said so after the game, I'm I'm, I'm never without confidence when I shoot, even if they don't go in. Like Keegan Murray, throughout the entire California Classic, was looking for his shot within the flow of the offense. I was actually wanting him to be more selfish. And I was frustrated at times, as I saw people on King's Twitter were frustrated, that they weren't giving him enough touches for being the best player on that team. I felt like they weren't prioritizing Keegan Murray in the offense enough. That being said, he still averaged 19.6 points per game over the three game stretch, eight rebounds per game, never got a double double, but got plenty close and shot 23 of 45 from the field. That's 51%. So in your first three NBA, and yes, I use air quotes there because Summer League is technically NBA, but not officially NBA, right? In your first three NBA games, you averaged 19.6 points, pulled down eight rebounds, and shot 51% from the field, over 40% from three-point range as well. Again, it's like we talked about after game one. What do you want to see from Keegan? Of course, we love to see the numbers. We love to see the Kings wins. But what we want to see is that Keegan Murray is consistently, as the fourth overall pick in the draft, he is the best player on the floor. NBA players, when they play at this level, clearly rise above. Keegan Murray clearly rose above. And I would say he did things that rose above above his competition, even in game two, where he struggled. The sequence that I just love, there are two moments from this game involving Keegan Murray that I loved. The first was that sequence in the third quarter 
turnaround jumper, Dirk Nowitzki-esque. I saw some people saying Rudy Gay-like uh, over a double team on the baseline. Goes back the other way. A lob is thrown. He deflects the lob at the rim, leading a, uh, leading to a transition opportunity, leading to a steal. And during that fast break, kick out, wide open, straightaway three, nothing but net. Like a great sequence. And it's a sequence I imagine. Like imagine if that sequence happened in the Golden One Center. I'm not just saying sour grapes like the California Classic should have been in the Golden One Center. I'm saying imagine if that happens or not if, when that happens in a regular season game in November in front of a full out, uh, full out, full house sold out. Easy for me to say. Golden One Center Kings crowd. Imagine that sequence. Turnaround jumper, crowd pops. Steal on the other end, crowd gets a little more popped. Straight away three, timeout by the opponents, timeout Lakers. That place is going nuts. And it's easy to imagine him being able to do that, him having sequences like that for the Sacramento Kings main roster. But it wasn't just the Keegan Murray show. Actually, I'm I, I jumping ahead of myself. The other sequence that I really, really liked was Keegan came off of either a double or a triple screen on a curl, catch and shoot. Caught the ball, facing away from the basket, turn, nice set feet, straightaway three, nothing but net. Easy execution, and Keegan knocks the shot down. You love to see it. Wasn't just Keegan Murray, though, that I was impressed with. I thought Matt Coleman, he only had 10 points. I should, shouldn't say only, because 10 points is good. 10 points, but he's been very impressive to me over the entire California Classic, and I look forward to seeing how it continues, or if it continues, in Summer League Las Vegas. Because, and I tweeted this out, I don't know if there's such thing as a two-way contract snub because every team has two two-way contracts. And for those of you who don't know, basically a two-way contract uh, is, is it's an official NBA contract that allows you to spend time with and practice and work with the main roster, be available for a certain amount of games for the main roster, but also spend time in the G League, right? You, you go back and forth. It's the two-way, right? But once you play a certain amount of games, and I don't remember what that number is, once you suit up for a certain amount of NBA games, you then have to be converted to a full-on regular NBA contract. So it's like a it's it's a it's a roster spot on the main roster without officially being a roster spot, right? It doesn't account as one of your official roster spots, and you only allow two of those. The two for the Kings are Keon Ellis and the Myas Keda. Matt Coleman might be a two-way snub because he's a really solid player. And I think I saw Jill Adge on Kings Twitter talking about maybe the Kings take a look at Matt Coleman as their third point guard. I still think the Kings are, in fact, I've heard that the Sacramento Kings are still looking for a third point guard, a third ball handler in the event that something happens with Fox or Mitchell. And, and not even that, it's always good to have playmakers and ball handlers on a roster. So maybe Matt Coleman's that guy. I don't know. At this point, you would have to be converted to a full roster. And I'm actually not sure if... Kata or Ellis were to be converted to a full roster spot. I'm not sure if that means the Kings would then have a two-way contract spot that they had then issue to Matt Coleman. I'm not sure how that works, to be honest with you. I'll have to look that up. But I've been impressed by Matt Coleman. And then Keon Ellis. Keon Ellis finally showed off a little bit of that shooting ability today in this game. But Keon has had really, really solid defensive possessions. He's a 3 and D guy. I did a, a, a uh, interview a couple weeks ago on Locked on Kings with a beat writer who covers Alabama basketball, who told us a lot about Keon Ellis and a lot of the things he was telling us we saw in the California classic. We saw his ability to move off the ball. We saw his, uh, his ability as a communicator, as a one-on-one -on -one defender. He's scrappy. He's active. I was really impressed by Keon Ellis. I think he's an, a great choice to get a two-way contract uh, from the Sacramento Kings. And I think there is a good chance that Keon Ellis could actually get some minutes in Sacramento. Now I'm not saying as a a, a, a consistent rotation player. I'm not there yet. I don't think he's he or any two-way contract player is going to consistently be in the rotation. But just like Damian Jones, who just got a, a main contract with the Lakers, just like uh, Chemezi Metu, who's still on the team, just like they were two-way contracts not too long ago and then got converted uh, to full team contracts, I could see that happening for Keon Ellis. Really fun California Classic. Now the Kings turn their attention to Summer League in Las Vegas. That begins on Saturday. Their first game is against the Orlando Magic. So we'll get a look at Paolo Bancaro, I believe. Hopefully he'll play in that game. I will be there at that game in Summer League. I think it's at the T-Mobile Arena. I should be there for that. I will be there the first 
full weekend of summer league. The Kings play on Saturday and then they play the next day, Sunday, the 10th, I believe it is. I will be there for both of those games. I'll also be there Monday, the 11th, but the Kings don't play that day. If you're planning on going to summer league, please let me know. I'd love to meet up with you uh, and say hi at the games or before the game, after the game, around the strip, whatever. My first time to Vegas. If you have any tips for Las Vegas, let me know too. Uh, I've never been, and I'm very much looking forward to going. Very excited to be able to go uh, and cover my first summer league. And I'll have hopefully unique Locked on Kings content from there. We'll definitely have podcasts recapping the games, but you never know who you can bump into at the summer league in, in Las Vegas. And if I can get some good guests or some cool interviews or whatever, I'll be sure to try and get it for you on Locked on Kings. So keep an eye out for that. Now we're switching gears. We're going away from the summer league, going away from the Sacramento Kings for the most part. I'm going to talk to you about Dante DiVincenzo signing with the Golden State Warriors because I saw a lot of comments in my comment section saying, hey, the Warriors won. Thanks a lot, Sacramento Kings, for letting Dante uh, come to us for free. I'm going to share with you my thoughts on DiVincenzo signing with the Warriors. I will get to that after I tell you more about our title sponsor here of the Locked on Kings podcast. That's Arcade One. Uh, Boom shakalaka. We have big news. The one and the only NBA Jam is back, and it's bigger than ever with the new Shaq Edition machine. People are obsessed with NBA Jam. I am as well. And I'm also thrilled to let you know and to tell all Locked on Kings listeners that you can once again play hoops with NBA legends in this arcade classic. Jump clear across the court, set the ball on fire in one of the first sports games ever to feature real and digitalized NBA licensed teams. There are no foul no free throws and no quarters required and you can play with your friends connect with them on your new all wi-fi leaderboards pre-order now from arcade one up.com that's arcade the number one up.com and estimated early september ship date 399 dollars you can get this machine and they have more machines uh like mortal Kombat. Golden Tee, Pac-Man, and so many more for you to check out. And like I mentioned earlier, they are giving away three NBA Jam Shack Edition machines. Hopefully one of them or all three of them will go to Locked on Kings listeners. Enter for a chance to win a game console for your man cave at arcade1up.com slash locked on. You've got till July 8th to enter, so not a lot of time. And you can win NBA Jam Shack Edition. Don't miss out. Enter today. So I know I said this after the Kevin Herter trade and Malik Monk signing, but I was not a happy camper. I recorded an an episode of Locked on Kings basically saying, what the hell are the Sacramento Kings doing when they let Dante DiVincenzo, or rather they didn't issue him the qualifying offer, essentially saying they were going to let him walk. They were going to let him go. Didn't make sense to me. I knew the Kings were very interested in DiVincenzo. They tried to trade for him before. With the Bucks, that was that sign and trade involving Bogdan Bogdanovich that fell through. They went and finally got him after a second attempt. We know that there was some drama between his camp and the Kings for how they felt the Kings were intentionally misusing him or not showing him off to drive his price down. The Kings don't issue that qualifying offer. And what I said was Monty McNair needed to show us, not tell us, show us why he made that decision. He then showed us very quickly, signed Malik Monk, traded for Kevin Herter. And the debate is still going on. And in my most recent episode uh, was an interview with Brad Roland from Locked On Hawks. Uh, I encourage you to go back and check that out. I talked to Brad about what Kevin Herter brings to the Sacramento Kings. We talked a little bit about the debate. Should Kevin Herter be the starting two over Malik Monk? Is Kevin Herter a two or a three? You can still weigh in on that debate at any time. But clearly, McNair showed us why he chose to let DiVincenzo go. And then DiVincenzo signs, I think, a two-year $9 million deal. I'm I'm not 100% sure that that's correct, but it sounds right with the Golden State Warriors and the second year as a player option. And my initial reaction to this was that's a really good deal for both teams. Honestly, it makes a lot of sense for the Golden State Warriors. A lot of sense. I think Dante DiVincenzo is going to be great for Golden State. Comes in off the bench, good defender, can space the floor and shoot. I think will fit in phenomenally in Steve Kerr's system. Like I think Dante DiVincenzo is going to be really, really good for the Warriors. Not phenomenal, but there's a reason why a lot of players go to that system and look really good. And it's smart of DiVincenzo to sign this deal, small money deal, gets the player option, he can opt out of it and get paid next offseason. That's what I expect his plan is. He's gambling on himself. DiVincenzo is going to show by playing with the Golden State Warriors the same way Gary Payton just got himself paid. Same way Andrew Wiggins now looks like a superstar that everybody wants. Dante DiVincenzo is going to try and go ball out in Golden State, maybe be another uh, part of another championship team, play really, really well, and next offseason get the fat payday that he was not going to get this offseason. Trying to rebuild his stock still that he's lost from the injury that he dealt with in Milwaukee. 
So I'm happy for DiVincenzo. I like this move for the Golden State Warriors. I got nothing bad to say about it. I have seen Kings or rather Warriors fans commenting on Locked on Kings saying, hey, thanks. Thanks for DiVincenzo, Kings. King, the Warriors win again. All right. Like if you're feeling good about DiVincenzo signing, you should. You absolutely should. I'm just saying Sacramento Kings fans are feeling a whole hell of a lot better about Malik Monk and Kevin Herter being here. Now, we could question whether or not either of those two players are as good as Dante DiVincenzo on defense. I think both of those players overall are going to be better players for the Kings than Dante DiVincenzo would have been. And only time will tell. Don't have anything bad to say. Truly don't have anything bad to say about DiVincenzo signing with the Warriors. I hope it works out for him. He's going to have less of a role there. Well, I, I don't. maybe that's not true. I was going to say he might have less of a role there than he would in Sacramento. He's not going to start in Golden State like he probably would have in Sacramento, but he's still going to be an important piece on that Warriors team, I think. I think Steve Kerr is going to find easy ways to use him and utilize him with the Warriors. But, like I said, I think the Sacramento Kings are more than thrilled with Kevin Herter and Malik Monk. And I am thrilled to talk about another sponsor here of Locked on Kings. That's Bet Online. Right now, you can go on to Bet Online and find out the best odds for landing destinations for Kevin Durant. They're changing every day right now. The favorite is the Phoenix Suns right behind them, the Toronto Raptors. There are no odds for the Sacramento Kings landing Kevin Durant, or if there are, there are very, 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 very long shot odds. But hey, maybe you can take advantage of those long shot odds like the Kings' long shot odds of winning the NBA championship. Yeah, the NBA championship for 2023. Those odds are out right now at Bet Online. It's your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. Have fun betting on sports the best way possible with the best lines, the best odds, and they have so many different games for you. It's not just NBA basketball. Of course, they have Major League Baseball going on right now. It's even a great place for your favorite events like MMA, boxing, even golf events are on there. So much for you to play and to enjoy. So head to the website today, use your mobile device, learn more about the trends and the action at betonline.net where the game starts. All right, I want to hear your thoughts on this debate. I know a lot of people weighed in on the Kevin Herter video that I put out. Kevin Herter, the starting two guard, or Malik Monk, the starting two guard. This is one of the things that I'm going to pay most attention to during training camp. I understand the argument for Malik Monk because of his scoring ability that you could say is better than Kevin Herter, although I think they're pretty equal scoring-wise. And of course, Malik Monk has the history that he has with De'Aaron Fox. You can make that argument. I definitely would listen to it. I like the argument of, I think Kevin Herter is a better defender. Although I know Malik Monk is working hard on his defensive game. And one of the reports with him coming to Sacramento was that he wants to prove that he can be a better defender than he's shown in his NBA career. So right now, I think with their, with their offense being pretty equal, maybe a slight edge to Malik Monk, I'm giving the definite edge defensively right now to Kevin Herter. I think defense is going to win this out. Me personally, at this point in time, on the 5th of July, I am choosing to believe or put out there that I think Kevin Herter will be the starting two guard for the Kings on opening night. I think the Kings opening night roster as of right now or opening night starting lineup will be De'Aaron Fox, Kevin Herter, uh, Harrison Barnes, Keegan Murray at the four, and then DeMontis a bonus at the five. But there are a lot of combinations to that starting lineup that Mike Brown can work with. Training camp is going to decide a lot of things, and maybe even what happens in summer league will decide a lot of things. I'll tell you what, if Keegan Murray continues on this run that he's been on during the California Classic, if he, if he carries that into summer league and leads the Kings to their third summer league championship and back-to-back -back summer league championships, I don't think that will have too much of an effect on the decision whether to start him or not. But at least in my mind, He's definitely going to be an NBA starter. I think he's a starter right away. I truly do. So weigh in on your thoughts on Keegan Murray starting right away, your thoughts on Kevin Herter versus Malik Monk at that starting two spot, and there's going to be so many more lineup questions and conversations for us to have over the course of this offseason. So make sure you continue to tune in for that. Whatever happens with the Kings, any more moves that they make, anything like that, all summer league games, whatever, we will have it covered right here on Locked on Kings. Plus, I want to do a mailbag episode. I want to do another uh, fans-only episode coming up here very, very quickly. And I'm working on right now 
We're still trying to get a, a, a date ironed out. Kyle Tucker uh, of The Athletic, who covers uh, Kentucky basketball, trying to get him back on here, Locked on Kings, to talk about the De'Aaron Fox and Malik Monk pairing in their time together at Kentucky. So that is in the works. Stay tuned for that. Really appreciate all your support. As always, I hope you go out and win one of those NBA Jam Shack Edition machines. Let me know, of course, if you do, or let me know if you just buy one. I'm buying one. It is on the way. Well, it's going to ship in September, and I'm really impatient waiting for it because I bought that machine almost immediately. Very much looking forward to my NBA Jam machine. Hopefully you get one as well. Maybe we'll uh, compare your, our scores on the Wi-Fi leaderboard. But I appreciate your support. Can't wait to have you on the next episode. Until next time, my name is Matt George. You have been listening to Locked On Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network.